Blackbusters. <laughs> I'm laughing already, man. What's cracking with the family? It's your boy, Big Ja. And I didn't say it last time. It's my first time I saying it. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, and welcome to Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. <laughs> I'm your host, <laughs> Big Ja. Uh huh. And we've been laughing even before the camera came on. That's why we got the giggles. And I'm your host, Big Ja, uh -huh. along with my co host. Welcome home, Big Tone. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome home, Big Tone. Yes. Yeah. Welcome home, Big Tone. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Uh -huh. Clever. I love that one, bro. Thanks, I love most of them, if not yeah. all of them. Some of the hit ones. Yeah, hit you mostly hit. Yeah. You but mostly hit. hit. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Welcome home, Big Tone. Uh huh. That's fire. Thank you, bro. Yes, indeed. All right, man. That's dope. <sighs> this is about to be fun, man. Um, I'm here with a, a very special person, man. Um, a guy that. When I when it's all said and done, and I'm telling my story about uh, my life or someone else's, he got to be in it. He's part of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's I, come on, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This mm -hmm. is my brother Clayton Thomas. Yes, How sir. Are you, man? What's yes, with, sir. Man? Folks, I, I don't I don't think that folks know what well, they will know eventually when I start you know talking about more personal things, man. Mm -hmm. And you'll be involved in that. In, the, in those conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, Clayton Thomas, man, thank you for blessing yeah. us again. Yeah. 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 I'll never reveal the full top five, but mm -hmm. one of the top five guests on the podcast. What? Man. For me. Oh, easy. That's for big. me. You easy know what I mean? Call. Like, one of, like, the last time, you make sure you go check out the Nutty Professor conversation. Yes. That was one of my favorite great. episodes. That was great. And, and, you know, I'll never pull the full five, but, but, no, <laughs> yeah. but you got a spot. You, you, yeah, you, you're in there. And, you, you're on your way. You you're on your way. You're, next you're on your way. Yes. Next Lenny Brew. Lenny Brew. You're on your way. You're on your way. You're on your way. I sat on stage the other day <laughs> just as a reference to somebody, yeah, and huh? the dude was like, I don't care. I was yeah. like, oh, my God, oh, man. Man. You on your way. You on your way. Nick Lenny Bruce. You Nick Lenny Bruce. Man, um, <laughs> amazing grace, bro. Thank you for being here, bro. Man, thank you for having Again, me, man. And um, this this movie particularly, here's the thing. And we were going to do the solo. Mm -hmm. And uh, cause um, but I was like, man, at the last minute, you live four minutes from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. So uh, and and here's the thing, we got to fix that. I know we got to. I know we got to get into the, the, the situation, but I'll fix that because you live down the street from me, and um, we don't see enough of each other. You know what's and, funny? And this is on everything. I saw more of you when you lived an hour away. In L.A.? Mm -hmm. Man. Man. He hey, John, you want to come he up? He lived yeah, down the street from me. Down the street. Here's the thing. Here's the, well, I'm going to fix that. Watch that. Watch this. <laughs> but um, real quick, I know cause we got we to get into it. We got stuff to do today. You got stuff to do today. So thank you for coming here last minute, pause, and, um, and blessing me with this because I need to do this. We Man. are doing with you. Roscoe Jenkins. Yes. Welcome home, Welcome Roscoe home. Jenkins. Yes. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. When I think of this movie, I think of you. Bro, mm. I think of you being in it. Mm. I think of me being in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, if they if they was to recast this, we don't we do not do the recast questions mm -hmm. anymore because mm -hmm. that would take a long time. Yeah. That was one of the questions we do every episode. It's like, how would you recast mm. this? Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, I don't know if we have time to, re to do the recast because yeah. I want to really think about it and really put it yeah. down. Yeah. Off top, this can be us. Yes. Off top, you can for sure be Roscoe Jenkins. Man. And I'll be Otis. Mm -hmm. Man, you'll be you know what amazing Perfect. Otis. Yes, it is. Perfect. For sure. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? And so uh But to interrupt you, you would be a way better Otis than the actor, obviously. Mm -hmm. But because you're gonna bring so many more layers that yeah. I know he yeah. couldn't have brought. Yeah. <sighs> but okay, real quick. Yeah. He killed the role. He killed yeah. it. He yeah. murdered the role. Man, he killed yeah. it. Yeah, he but looked, I get what you're saying. He looked great. Yeah. He, he looked, looked like great. somebody older brother. Yeah. Yes. That stayed at home. Yes. <laughs> that stayed at the crib. Yeah. And no, them big ass kids. Yes. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. My kids are probably gonna be that big yeah. too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But, but every scene he was always cooking. Yeah, he was always he, cooking. He was either he was on the either on the grill or buying the, the meat or, yeah, or buying the meat or, or, or cooking and frying, or the, frying fish. the fish. And yeah. you know what? We're gonna get to that in a minute. Yeah, they they ruined that whole pan of fish. Oh, no. Yeah. Bro, I, I, I know. I know. We'll get to it. Roscoe Jenkins. Welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins. Written and directed by Malcolm D. Lee. Mm -hmm. You murdered that brother. Mm. You made. I, I'm going a, I'm to a give my, my fist at the end. Yeah. Right? Uh, but Malcolm D. Lee, you did your thing with Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins, starring Martin Lawrence. Come on, man. 
legendary. Uh, James Earl Jones. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Cedric the Entertainer. Yes. yes. Joey Bryant, mm -hmm. Nicole Ari Parker, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mike Epps. Mike. Yes. Monique. Oh, come mm -hmm. on, man. Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. Sug Avery. Sug Avery. <laughs> Sug Avery. Sug Avery. Can't forget about Sug. Can't forget about Sug. Nah. Can't forget about Sug. Man. Uh, Louis C.K. Yeah. Louis C.K. Yes. with the cameo. Yeah, with the cameo. Yes. Mm -hmm. With the cameo. It's it's just a this is just a feel good, mm -hmm. feel good movie, bro. Martin. I wish. Here's the thing, and this was a different Martin. This is not Martin yeah. Payne no. Martin. Yeah. This is Roscoe Jenkins Martin, which is a different, older, yeah, more subdued, but still gave us Martin. Yeah. I wonder if he can still do this. You wonder. It's all that. Here's the thing. Before Roscoe Jenkins, you would have had to ask, ah, I wonder, can Martin still go go? Mm -hmm. Because we were so now used to just big box office, mm -hmm. bad yeah. boys to Martin and national security, which is slept on. But you see Facts. that Martin and you're like, all right, cool. He's co-working with other people. Mm -hmm. But when you see Roscoe Jenkins, it reminds you, oh, he's one of the greatest all time for real. Come on. Yeah. I forgot Come on. about this for a second. So to see that Martin, I know he can. And to think about the movie. It had to have been the director that brought it out of him. Yes, had to be. That, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Because you know, I haven't been around Martin. I haven't. I've seen him from a distance. Yeah. you've been around him. Yeah, and and you, I see Cedric as he's gotten older. Keep that young. Keep that Cedric. That Seti. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you know what I'm saying. He's still Seti. He's still yeah. mm -hmm. Cedric, the entertainer of old. Yeah. even though he's older. Um, and Martin, every time I see his interviews, he's very cool, calm, collected, yeah. soft spoken, yeah, and everything. So, of course, he is he is who I pattern my initial love for comedy. Yeah. Or my influence. He's my one of my first influences. Eddie, of course, mm -hmm. but Martin was when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Martin was I, I understood. I'm going back. I'm going to school reciting his jokes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying reciting his stuff on Def Jam on um on his specials yeah. on his TV show. And to see him do this, it's like he was uh, older. He was older than I am, who what I am now. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was in his still. He was in his forties. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, he still got it. Bro. Let me ask you guys a He's, question. Yeah, yeah. And tell me I'm wrong, but like this movie's underrated. Oh right? my god! Right? Yes. Like, yes. like, like, yes. Criminally underrated. Yes. Like I hadn't seen Roscoe Jenkins in a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the rewatch mm -hmm. and I was like why don't I fucking watch this every weekend yeah man it was so good yes it was I think it's criminally underrated it is people talk about and praise other films mm -hmm. of this type of this type and put weaker films mm -hmm. yeah. not as good films on a higher pedestal mm -hmm. than Welcome Home Roscoe Jr. very true yeah. I think as I think we're missing we're missing a gem here yes. that needs to be in heavy rotation mm -hmm. much more frequently and talked about more frequently than what we do. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like this movie became victim of I don't remember what other movies came out that year, but I feel like huh? There's a lot. Two thousand eight. Yeah. So it was like there was so many movies that came out that kind of overshadowed it because this was still a just rated R comedy, right? As opposed to uh, a big pushed and produced. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Promoted mm -hmm. movie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this movie had all the stars and all the legends Star in it, and studded. they deliver. But to your point about Martin, Martin off camera is the coolest guy on the planet. Yeah. Like he's very uh, okay, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Like he's that. Mm -hmm. When that camera turns on, there's a different side of Martin. The Martin that I believe in this project, right? Yes. And I'm behind this 100. percent And there's the all right, man, just what, what are we doing, right? right? So Roscoe Jenkins was the project that he believed in, and you can mm -hmm. see the energy behind it. Right. Compare it to if it's like, all right, man, I'm going to just, um, I'm, I like it, but I don't like what this director is saying. It's different than the vision that I thought. So Martin is so much of an artist. Mm -hmm. I felt, I was so inspired by watching Roscoe Jenkins because it was like, my hero mm -hmm. is here to stay, bro. Yeah. Yes. Man, he, uh, I think he has one. I, I think I, I know. Yeah, this is one of them ones. This is one yeah. of those classic films that he's. That, and I think it was casted well. Yeah. Um, Monique being big sis. Yes. Ooh. Michael Clark Duncan being big bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing: if you told me on paper before this, I was like Michael Clark Duncan. Uh, of course, big brother. Yeah. yeah. Big country brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big swole. Yes, he is an Alabama savage. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But it's Martin. 
It's Monique. It's Mike Epps. Listen, it's right. Cedric. Listen, He's can he keep up? Right. Like, it, it, can he? Because you here's the thing. I, I'll say this real quick. Uh, mm. Being you could be a good actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Act, being a good actor means you you have to be able to go different speeds, mm-hmm. different paces. Mm-hmm. Bring bring it. Be uh, if you're the Martin isn't the funny man in most of those scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Martin's just, he's the straight man. Mm-hmm. He's not the he's not the the slapstick dude. This cast, you got to be the funny. You got to be the funny in this scene with Martin. You know this, what I'm saying? He, I feel like he brought he brought it he brought it. This yeah. cast is is Captain America. With the with the with the sparkler circles on mm-hmm. your left, mm-hmm. and and everybody shows up. Yeah, not this is a super team. Yes, because a lot of these people in this movie, we know Martin is a little bit more mature, mm-hmm. but everybody else is kind of like at the height of their powers. Mm. Like they've like they've all got their fastball. You like Mike Epps? This is perfect, Mike Ooh, Epps. In the this pocket, is in the yes. pocket, Mike yeah, Epps. Yes. If you like Monique, oh my god, this is this is they the let Monique. Her go. They let yeah. her go too. This is, they let her work, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So like you got Monique working, mm-hmm. being the like almost the best version of Monique. Yes. Yeah. At the same time oh that god. Epps is doing everything that he needs to do, at the same time that Martin is doing what he needs to do. It's this is why the, it's, I'm getting goosebumps, man. Man, because yeah. everybody is. Really good, right? Yeah. Yes. Even like like Nicole Ari Parker, mm-hmm. yes. who normally plays a bitch, mm-hmm. like she normally plays like great a, point, a, yeah. But even she used to play, yeah, yeah, high strung, uppity, uppity, high maintenance. She plays a great girl, down home, down the girl home that got girl. away, yeah. yeah, prom queen, yeah, in Arkansas. She wins, mm-hmm. and as much as she plays that part well, Joy plays Ryan. a really good. <laughs> Do you want to hear who stole the show? Yeah. Joy yeah. Bryan. Made, my wife was like, I don't, I, I just don't, I, just, I don't like her. She's mm-hmm. just not like her face. That's how like, you know she did well. Yeah. I said because she's ruining this role. Yeah. When I say ruin, I mean like she's ah, beating it down yeah. in a great way. Yeah. yeah. Like she played a very because I remember her from from Antoine Fisher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The wholesome, sweet yeah. Navy yeah. girl yeah. that helped him find his family. Get yeah. Richard Die Trying. Get Richard Die Trying. Yes, Ooh, indeed. Uh-huh. Even then, my wife was like, she was she was still kind of uppity. And mm-hmm. no, she wasn't. Not to get rich. Yeah. You're, you're, you're forgetting. Go back and watch that movie. Yeah. Because yeah. that this, the woman that we're looking at now would not ever look at 50 Cent, mm-hmm. Calvin, Calvin Jackson. Right. Or Curtis right. Jackson. Yeah. Um, this woman, she played a great, like, endearing. I can see how you can fall for her. Mm. She's helping you get better. She's making you eat right. She's yeah. making you exercise and yeah. woo saw. She's the, the Hollywood girl for, yeah. him, for his yeah. Hollywood yeah. life. Yeah. Exactly. There could, you couldn't... Roscoe Jenkins, also shout out to Avion because uh-huh. he was in that. Yeah, but, yeah. shout out to Avion for sure. <laughs> when you see Roscoe Oh, I'm sorry, RJ. RJ. When you see RJ, mm-hmm. RJ Jonas, Stevens. RJ, <laughs> RJ Stevens. <laughs> RJ Stevens mm-hmm. needs this girlfriend yes. because now she's making him his his levels get even higher. Mm-hmm. You couldn't have had the girlfriend that you had back home yeah. in no, this no, Hollywood no, no. life no. because she wouldn't have. It wouldn't have made sense. Yes, no, no not at all, mm-hmm. not at all. Um, she was a great. Like great uh, arm candy, yeah. Wife, mm-hmm. fiance for R.J. Stevens, absolutely, yeah. and with the dog too. Come yes. on, man, yeah. yeah. And it and it made sense. The like that's why I thought I was like, this is superior writing. Yeah, she wins Survivor and she maintains that Survivor energy, energy. Yeah. throughout the entire film. Right. Just the competitiveness. Yes, it's, it's the way. You know how Survivors the alliances. Mm-hmm. She's peeping alliances mm-hmm. and all of this different type of stuff. It just was so. Well done. It just was just well and, done. And, yeah. it, it didn't seem like she he made a bad choice. She really liked him. She yeah. really cared about him, I think. Mm-hmm. But when the comp- the competition brought her back mm-hmm. into that who she was yep. on that show, even with the young boy, Roscoe's son, yep. and even with the morning into the prom queen, she was jealous. Yeah. She couldn't hide it. She yeah. was super jealous. So Roscoe Jen- Jenkins, where Roscoe Stevens, R.J. Stevens, R.J. Stevens, Roscoe yes. Jenkins Jr. is yeah. Martin Lawrence, and he plays the son of this a uh, down home country strong father who this you know he don't take no mess yeah. right. But look, when you look at Roscoe Jenkins, the character of R.J. Stevens is built up, and this goes so much deeper into us being men Mm -hmm. and black men who Mm -hmm. were raised by these older black men who did not give us the attention and love we felt we deserved. He felt he was overlooked his entire life by his cousin, which I know you get to, but that's what made him create this character to be like, all right, well, I don't need that. 
All I need is me. me. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. what goes with the survivor girlfriend yep. and his winning lifestyle is because my father didn't love me enough. Real quick. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say something. I don't know if you guys seen this quick interview clip of Deion Sanders recently talked about who he was as, as primetime as an athlete in college and in high school and in pros. He said, my mom didn't go to one of my games. What? Mm-hmm. And my, his father was off in the wind. He what? said, my mom didn't go to any of my high school games. And so I never, I purposely, to, to build up a, 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 a wall, mm-hmm. I purposely didn't care about that. I said, well, it's just, it's just me here. I had no one cheering for me in the stands. Yeah. So I cheered for myself. Yep. And I gave myself prime time. I gave myself all the accolades. And even before I achieved them, and I, but when I gave myself all these accolades and how great I was, I had to live up to that. Mm-hmm. And that's what you see in front of you is a man that cheered for himself his whole life. Mm-hmm. Hence the... The team me, mm-hmm. and it can, uh, Deion Sanders comes off as as a uh, very uh, egotistical, very um um arrogant, mm-hmm. and self centered. But then you see him with his family, yeah. and you see people talk about him his, as a teammate. They're like, mm-hmm. "No, nah, he's the opposite of that." But that's what he has to had to do to make himself feel like, "Okay, I belong here. I believe in myself because no one else did." Yeah, R.J. Stevens is is a reflection of his absence or the fact of feeling absent in the world where he's from. Yeah. So he hasn't came back. He hasn't been back to his house in nine, ten years. Ten years. And why would he go? Yeah. yeah. Why would he just go? to be overlooked? Yeah. Just to be I'm overlooked. RJ Stevens here in Hollywood. I'm in LA. I got mm-hmm. the best looking chick yep. in the in the city. TV um, show doing TV numbers. Doing numbers. Yeah. I come home. I come home. My dad tell me, "Yeah, your little TV show." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I come back and I'm not even my my you cousin ready? is. Replacing me as his son. You ain't even hung up my TV. The TV that I bought the TV. Bought, <laughs> the the TV brand new flat yeah. Yeah. I think I think because Roscoe, he creates the me philosophy because playing by your rules, Dad, is not getting me anywhere. Mm-hmm. Being honorable like you, Dad, isn't working out for me. Right? Like you know, doing the right thing, making the right call. I'm getting my ass beat. But when you, <laughs> but when you play the game like Clyde, when you. Cheat Bend the win. rules, mm-hmm. cheat, win. When mm-hmm. you have no honor, that's what gets re- rewarded in this house. Right. So I can't be here. Right. Or I need to learn how to be slimy and swarmy, which he never was. Right. He never was. He never was. He never was that. You know, so I, I thought it was a really good arc. I like the way he softens. Yeah. How, like, mm-hmm. he literally, you kind of watch him melt as a character, yeah. right? The interactions with, with, his, with his brother, the interaction with his mom, and he, and he, and he comes home. And it's believable. Yeah. Right? Like, it's predictable, but it's believable the way he slowly, you know, kind of turns and embraces home. You know what we don't talk about is, and this is not, I'm not just hyping up Martin, but what I'm saying this to say that we don't give him, we always talk about Eddie, we talk about Jamie. Martin is an amazing actor. Mm -hmm. Facts. Talk about the fact that Roscoe Jenkins, R.J. Stevens, is this big Hollywood guy, but goes home and is nothing Outside of all these movies, Martin Lawrence is a multimillionaire. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To be able to tap into, all right, who is this guy? What is he feeling? And bam, that kind of level of commitment. And then, like you said, he's the straight man for a lot of this movie. But then in the scenes where he has to turn this up, the comedy comes right back in. Oh, yeah. simple. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, the level of... Shout out to Malcolm D. Lee again, man. Just Malcolm D. Sorry. Lee. And man. I feel like Malcolm D. Lee was sitting here on set mm-hmm. like this. Action. Yeah. <laughs> the lip bite. Yeah. Uh, the, the, so, quiver. the quiver. The quiver. Yeah. I got him. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing, bro. I promise you. I promise you. I know the feeling when you're sitting here as a director and you see, I know you and you get people to come do a sketch for yeah. you mm-hmm. and you say, man, I wonder if she's available. Mm. I wonder if he's available. Let mm-hmm. me see if I can call them up and see if they come and do the sketch with me. And then you see the sketch and you're like, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I knew this was going to come together the way I thought. Yeah. I just had to get the right people. Mm-hmm. Malcolm D. Lee was like, man, I got Monique. I got mm-hmm. I got Cedric, Monique, and Martin mm-hmm. in the same film. Yeah. Playing rela- re- uh, relatives. Yeah. And let's see how, we know how it is with your sisters, right. and your brothers, and how you interact with them. It was, I, fe- I, I literally felt like all three of them were related. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even, I, I felt like not just playing off of Martin, but I felt that Otis and Monique were brother and sister. 100%. It felt real, yeah. Did you see 100%. Where, where she was uh, on, at the podium crying and talking mm-hmm. about her her three her three ex-husbands? Yeah, yeah. And she was saying all kind of indecent things. Mm-hmm. And he got up there and she mushed him. Yeah. Like, she like, stop, stop talking. Leave me alone. And he, he took and it. He mm-hmm. walked over there. He was like, 
Yep. He was like, hey, hey thank y'all for, uh, thank mm-hmm. y'all for, uh, uh, round, of, round of applause for Betty. And this, he wanted to strangle her. Yeah. yeah. But he's, he's big bro. He wanted to, you know how you got your little sister and little brother. Mm. I'm the youngest, so I don't have no little brothers or sisters. Yeah. But I was the kid. Yeah. I was the little brother that you yeah. wanted to strangle. Yeah. At one point in time, for sure. Mm-hmm. So I, I saw that. I believed him. I believed his com- his comedic relief yeah. was dope. He was great. I, you, I mean, you would think, like, what other comedies has, has he done? I don't think he's done much. No. Comedies. He was in, first of all, non speaking, mm-hmm. Friday. That was his yeah, he first was. big yeah, he job. Was. Yep. Yep. Nice. You know what I mean? Yep. Yes. Yep. And then everything. He was a big TV show guy. So I believe yes. um, I believe he'd done an episode or two of Martin, Jamie yes. Foxx show. Like he made the cycle mm-hmm. through all of the uh UPN and Fox shows yep. in the nineties. Mm-hmm. And then he makes the jumps to to, to movies. Yeah. Yep. So all he was yards. in Armageddon. Armageddon. Right? Like, you know, he, he has Green his role Mile, in Armageddon. Green 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 Mile. Mile. He showed his ass mm-hmm. pause. Yes. Yeah. 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 He was he was really good. Um one one thing that I also wanted to call out as a testament to Martin's acting is the way Martin shrunk in front of his father. Yeah. He yeah. All, he, like, he, even he's his big he's personality. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but the way he, yeah, dad. Yeah. Yes, yes, dad. yes, sir. No, yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Like, like, and, and I thought that was interesting because I thought it was interesting. You know, this movie has a lot of subtle shit. Mm-hmm. It's a comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love the fact that he lost his luggage. Yeah, you know, like, like he, mm-hmm. like he lost. Yes, he lost his camouflage. He, yep. lost, he lost. He lost his armor. peacock feathers. He lost his armor. His peacock feathers. Yeah, you know, yeah. if he had that, this would have been a completely different movie. Hundred percent. He's already a laughing it, stock, fresh off the plane. Yeah. Fresh yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as he got yeah. out the rental car, they were like, "Hey, look at your little yeah. picnic pants, man." Uh, hey, boo boo. Uh, uh, the picnic pants. Uh, uh, he getting clowned by yeah. his and the rental car itself. Yeah. Yes. If he is shown up, if he is shown up in in, in the white fit. Yep. RJ would have came home. Yes. yes. This would have been it'd yes. welcome home RJ. Yes. Right. But because he lost all of that. Yeah. Because none of that was was all of that was was props. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't who he was. Right. Roscoe came home. Mm-hmm. I thought that was great. I thought the fact that he had to come home as he was. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Without all of the other shiny shit made it great. And I think it made it easier for the family to welcome him back. Mm-hmm. Right. Because he was not at he was not an other, yeah, right? He you was know, not an other. he was just he was Roscoe. Yeah, yeah. Roscoe with the with the goofy ass pants on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I love this movie. It's a reunion film for anybody. You are from Detroit, mm-hmm. and when you go home, how does that feel? Oh man, you know, I'm not <sighs> back home because when I get back home in front of my mom and my sister, I'm just Clayton. Right. It mm-hmm. ain't. Uh yeah, and I saw you doing this, and I saw you the mm-hmm. take that trash take the tra- out, take that trash, take out. the trash, out. and I don't know <laughs> why you're raising your voice, and it's mm-hmm. like I'm sorry, you know what I mean? You're yeah. right back to uh-huh. who you were before you left. These are your real people. Yes, and these are the people that remind you who you are. Yeah, and, I love that. And and for him, I'm okay with that. He wasn't. No, Roscoe wasn't okay. RJ wasn't okay with no. that. He didn't want to be reminded of who he was because mm-hmm. he fought so hard to not be him anymore. It's like for them. They're like, yo, this is my little brother. Or, oh, look at my son. He's like, listen, growing up was a hellhole for me. Mm -hmm. It might have been good for you because you're the older brother. Good for you because you're the older sister. Good for you because you're the cousin coming into this. But me, I got picked on all the time. Nobody ever took my side. This is hell. Mm -hmm. And I finally got out to make something of myself. And I want to show it and shove it in all y'all's faces. And I want my father to say he's proud of me. Mm -hmm. Do you know how my father... In real life, before he died, he kept telling me how proud he was. And that felt like winning an Academy Award Mm -hmm. because throughout all of my stand-up career, I would be like, tell all these jokes and do all these things. And he would never laugh. And I'm like, everybody (laughs) is laughing and you're not laughing. And it wasn't until as he was, you know, winding down, he's like, I just wanted you to know, I'm really proud of you, son. I was like, I needed that. And that's what Roscoe needed. Right. Yeah, even because yes, sir. Because I think I think dads, I think some dads love differently, mm. right? Yeah. Like like some dads are the cheering dad in the stands. Yeah, you know, go go take it to the house. I don't right. know. And there are other dads that that marvel that love you so much that even while you're doing your thing, all they can do is just admire. This is my little boy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you know, look at him. Doing his thing, yeah. right? Like, you know, I can't, I'm not a regular fan. Yeah. I, you know, like you're, this is not a regular performance. I'm I'm looking at you 
Like, that's my boy. Mm, yeah. I remember when he was little. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he he probably can't even hear the jokes. No. Because mm-hmm. all he can do is, is look. I do that sometimes with, with my daughters. I just look at them, and they'll be doing something, and I can't even acknowledge what they're doing because I remember when they couldn't do it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Marveling you know, at the activity. activity. I remember when they was, yeah. you know, I remember when you couldn't walk. Yeah. Now you now you cheering, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm, so your mind is over like, man. Yeah. She, you know. She just did the bat flip. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and that's kind of how. She's walking. I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. still on the fact that she's walking. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and there was subtle love from James Earl Jones like that. Who, yeah. who, subtle, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know, like like he tried, like you know, when when they have the scene to build the the table, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they go in and they're working on the table, and he asks his son it's some very specific questions, right? Like you know, do you want to get married? Right. right? Like you know, what kind of wedding do you want? But you can see the fracture between them as well. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, like sure, you know, sure. so so it wasn't. You could say that there's a fundamental communication gap, mm-hmm. a lack of understanding, yes. a lack of respect between the two yeah. that was still very much present. And you could see at the very end of that conversation, some RJ defiance come out, right? Like, you know, still mm-hmm. respectful, but like, check back to you, you right? You know what? Yeah. I completely agree. Mm-hmm. That yes, and for me, seeing that movie and seeing so many different things that I can relate to my life, right? My entire life, Love my father, of course, but being raised by my mom, my mother was always the one who handled things, and she's a very dominant personality, and I would just be so small, and I would, like, you know, whatever my mom say, that's what it is, Mm -hmm. and something happened a year ago to where I had to let her know I'm a man, Mm -hmm, and I had to let her know how things were going to go, and it felt so good to not only stand up for myself, but to tell my mom what was up in a respectful way, Mm -hmm. letting her know how much I love her and everything, but this is how things are. And to see my mother become, it was like, this is what I was waiting on because at the end of the day, I am a woman. I've led you this far. Now you, up. Whatever you say, son. It's Boom. like, mm-hmm. oh man, I could have done this sooner. Oh, well, oh yeah, sooner. Mm-hmm. But it's the respect factor, and that's what I saw with James Earl Jones, where it was like, I'm tired of this, daddy. Mm-hmm. He did this, and it's always that, it's always that, and he's just yeah. taking yeah. it. Yep. He took it, and at the very end, it was like. You stood up to me. I was the biggest boss of them mm-hmm. all. Right. And that's what I felt. Papa, Papa Jenkins. Papa Jenkins. Mm-hmm. Papa Jenkins, man. Here's the thing. You just said, you said, I should have did this sooner. And yeah. he was like, man, she finally said, okay, okay you're the boss. And this is, what I, this is what I was waiting for, son. Yeah. I think, because, you know, RJ is the youngest out of the three kids. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you notice, um, Betty... Monique's character, yeah. she knows who she is. Yeah, mm-hmm. she don't have no shame. She talking how she want to talk in front of her family, yeah. her mom, and her mom. <laughs> her mom had to find, hey, get in the house. Get in yeah. the you house. You talking crazy? Yeah, but she she is who she is. Yeah. P- Big Otis is the sheriff of the town. Mm-hmm. He was the best linebacker in the state. Yeah, mm-hmm. hurt his knee, and now he just he stayed at home, got his wife, and his two big ass kids. Big yeah. ass kids. He kid. loves his life. He loves yeah. his. He life. don't. He, he said, "Man, I I, I could do my thing. I'm the sheriff he of this town. His, he loved his. He truck. loved his truck. Loved it. Loved, loved everything. Loved his truck. Loved yeah. to be on that grill. grill. Yeah. He was okay with loved who he ribs. was. Yeah. Monique was okay with who she was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And his mom and mom and dad. Mama Jenkins, Papa Jenkins was okay with that. They saw you got you got to parent your kids different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Otis Otis was always he was the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he clearly he's the biggest, he's probably the biggest, strongest dude in the city. Yeah. That's my boy. Mm-hmm. I don't gotta uplift him. He's right. already, he already knows he's the greatest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's and he's even okay with being who he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The sheriff, not the NFL player. Mm-hmm. He don't need Hollywood. He don't need the the, the money. He's fine with what he has. And, and, and Monique, crazy ass, Betty is who she is. Yeah. Right? Yep. I think he resented his son. Not resented. Was upset. Frustrated with his son. Because even at the end of the movie, the wife was like, baby, he, just because he has your name doesn't mean he's you. Mm-hmm. That was a bar. Yeah, was I, a I got bar. goosebumps. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times, I don't have, I'm, I'm not a father yet, but I could just imagine being a father and giving your son your namesake mm-hmm. and him not doing what you would do. Yeah. Um, your boy Roscoe was always unsure mm-hmm. of himself, and his father didn't like that. Yeah, his his father, all these kids beating you, and you always just 
unsure of yourself, which is why you weren't winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't have that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you're so unsure of yourself. Yeah. You're sure you, you just, you, 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 the flashbacks when he was a kid, mm -hmm. his face, yeah. he, he was always, yeah. yep. I'm not sure if I can or not. You know what I'm saying? And his father was like, man, come on, toughen the fuck toughen up. Toughen up. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, so he, whereas Clyde, I think it's I think Papa Jenkins could understand and measure Clyde's intangibles and his obvious successes yes. in a way that he couldn't do with RJ. Because he's right. not he is. Right. You right. know. So for for, for And Papa, I know I gotta give you that love. I, exactly. <laughs> Papa Jenkins goes, Clyde got three, three dealerships. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Damn, I got a whole show I got in a LA. Whole show. He got three I got a mansion. Yep. But 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 to Papa Jenkins. He understands Clyde got three dealerships. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and so he respects that. You know, Clyde show up with pies. Pie, right? A, a whole truckload. whole truck of truck pies. Escalate mm -hmm. back full. Yeah. But this is the way, and this goes to where we live and what we do for a living. The people back home where I'm from don't understand, even if I explain to them, mm -hmm. what Hollywood or social media is. Mm -hmm. They get it if they see a large number, yep. but you got to understand a large number to a lot of people might be 500 views. Mm -hmm. So right. it's like, oh, that's good. 500 people saw this because I remember yep. me being out here for years yeah. and getting a video to hit 500 views telling Tangerine, it got 500 I'm views. Juiced. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm so juiced. they couldn't possibly understand. So for him saying Clyde has three dealerships, I get that because I own a car mm -hmm. and I got this from a dealership and my adopted son has three of these dealerships. Mm -hmm. Oh, you doing it. But yeah. if I see this TV show, all right, yeah, Hollywood, mm -hmm. a lot of people looking at you, okay? Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't get it. Right. And that, oh, man, this movie. Mm -hmm. Man, the, who, uh, uh, here's the thing. Yeah. yeah. People in the <laughs> South let it eat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give them, give them a fat back TV mm -hmm. and some pie. They straight, straight. Yeah. They don't need a flat screen. Nah. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Nope. They want them pies. Yeah. Mom was juiced about them pies. She was she giddy. Was, she was beside herself. Come on, man. She was beside yeah, herself. She was beside herself like a mug. Like hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. So it, it it just shows that what what they it was a disconnect. Yeah. The, the family that he left behind, they own this and mm -hmm. you own that, yeah. and it's not mixing. And it's, even then, you can't do right. I got all this money, all this fame, all this notoriety, all this status. Yeah. And y'all don't care. Yeah. Don't care, bro. Don't but, care. But they care about tangible shit like cars and, you know what I'm saying, a dealership. You know, like, like that, that, that's mm -hmm. more important. I think, you know and I think, I think this was, what's real interesting is how family puts a premium on presence. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. They can appreciate everything that you're doing as long as you're not parachuting in their life into their life every five or six years. Right, right. Yeah. Like if like if you show up and they get to see you, they get to ask questions yeah. and learn a little bit more. Versus, there you go, Mister Hollywood. Mm. Yeah, they, you, you know, know Mister Stevens. Yeah, they Ooh. he comes. Doctor Stevens. He came home, Doctor Stevens. Yeah, like you know, we don't. You don't care about us mm -hmm. enough to show up. So we don't care about you. Right. Right? Yeah. You know? And so I, I feel like even with uh, RJ Sr., Roscoe Sr., he was he, he's at fault too. Yes. Oh, and yeah. Wife, I, I, one thing I wish would have happened was that one-on-one -on -one conversation where he officially apologized. He needed, he needed to apologize too because there were things that, that – uh, Huh? I'm listening. Oh, yeah, I want your yeah. adventure's point. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, there, there were things that he didn't do as a father that might have helped shaped Roscoe Jr. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't have he didn't have the support of his father. Even if he did, he felt he didn't. And if your if your son feels he didn't, mm -hmm. chances are he didn't have the full support. He is of a different generation. I know we throw that around a lot. Mm -hmm. But James Earl Jones' character in Roscoe Sr. would never have been able to say, son, I'm sorry. Right. Yep. He could that's not in his DNA. Yeah. It only goes the way that it went because him saying, I need to accept my son, the way that he apologized, honestly, was him listening to his wife. Mm -hmm. When his wife said, even though he has your name, he's not you. And it's like, damn, that mm -hmm. look yeah. was the I'm sorry. I realized the error of my ways. Mm -hmm. He would never give that to his son or mm -hmm. even another man mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. a man over the age of 
I think James might have been 60 or 70 in that movie. Mm-hmm. If he's 60 or 70 years old, that's not how they're wired. Yeah. Right. They're wired, take care of my family, pay these bills, make sure everybody eats. Sorry. Close. I'll just that's fix it. it if memory, sorry. If Bam. memory serves me correctly, he wasn't even tripping at the banquet. Like I think it was his wife that said, "I I, I wish Rob he said was here. he made his choice. He made his choice. Yeah, his choice. he wasn't he, like, he wasn't tripping. He wasn't tripping. He washed his hands. even at that point. So you're right. Like even despite all of the stuff that like RJ said and the need for Papa Jenkins to apologize, he had already callous that part. Yeah, even you know, even like he wasn't even like he made his choice. I'm done. Right. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Even even when he didn't whoop Clyde when they were kids, mm-hmm. Clyde hugged him. He didn't hug Clyde. He wasn't yeah. like him, your son. He right. was like, I'm going to spray you this ass whooping. Don't mm-hmm. let this shit happen again. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. And Clyde hugged him. He didn't even know how to respond to that. He yeah. Was like, that goes to show the emotion. Yeah. It, it, just, there are certain... My father was a loving father, hands-on. I love mm-hmm. you, son. Mm-hmm. Give me a hug. He was that, which is crazy because he wasn't raised that way. Right. He was raised the opposite. He was raised abusive. He was abused, mm-hmm. violently abused um, as, a, as, a, as a son. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's why he is the way he was because yep. he didn't really hug my older brothers. I came around, I got the best part of my father. Best in part. In his 50s. Yeah. In his 50s. He's grown. That version. Yeah. That so, version. But some men never adopt that. Yeah. My, my father yeah. adopted it. You know what I'm saying? But it, it took him a while because my, my dad told me stories. My brothers told me stories about Pops. Like, yeah. Pops gave you a hug? Pops didn't give me a hug since he didn't, until you were born. And but when you me told hugs. me that about your dad, first of all, I don't know if you ever had the pleasure of meeting his late father. Nah, he didn't. Nah, didn't. nah. Your dad. He should not had so much love, like his energy was just pure love. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's for you to tear up anything, no, no. but it was like every time I was around him, I was like, man, this guy's the sweetest guy mm-hmm. in the world. Yeah. And, then, and then you start telling me stories about how he was. Bro, and I was like, lie. impossible, yeah. right? Nah. Yeah. And you start learning the same thing with my dad or with my mother. We were raised differently because we were had at different points in their lives. Mm-hmm. My older sister, she was like, oh, mama was a different person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you got the version of him that was evolved, was re- he had time, he had his love for you. Mm-hmm. And not to say he didn't love your brothers, but it was like... Showing it was different. It was different. He yeah. did. He, he he told me, like, it just, it just, he had so much, so much pressure to be the father. Ooh. And father to him, mm-hmm. fathering to him meant stru- strict, uh, being strict, mm-hmm. being the warden. Yeah. And that's cool. You gotta be that. You know, my brothers understand that. But they, but the, but the, the nurturing, the nurturing for your mom is great. You need mm-hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? But too much of it will make you too much of it with nothing else will yeah. make you a soft and coddled Ooh. child. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Your, the nurturing from your father, even if he don't, even if he don't hug you, but son, I'm proud of you. That that a boy, yeah. that a boy, son. Mm-hmm. The, those things help you. Yeah. And Roscoe Jenkins didn't get enough of that. No, I got it. it. I was very confident as a kid. I never yeah. second guessed myself. Because my pops, my, my pops made me feel like I was the best thing ever in life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I never felt like, damn, can I, can I be? You know, I could be. Nigga, my dad, my dad's my dad. Yeah. yeah. He made me. So yeah. I, 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 my dad was Superman. Yeah. So he made me. Nigga, I'm Superboy. Nigga, I'm cracking. Superboy. Yeah. 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 But Roscoe yeah. felt like Otis was Superboy. Yeah. I, he didn't have that. I felt like. And that's why he was so. He was just. He was so uneasy yes. and so it lacked so much confidence. I yeah. think that like because Clyde is an incredibly likable. Kid, yeah, and person, charismatic, right? Yes. Like you know, and that's Very sure of himself. And it's always difficult to share the room with the charismatic guy. That's tough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's it's tough. it's always very tough when even your dad. Seems to prefer the company. That will crush a boy, man. <laughs> of, 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 of Clyde. Prefer right? the company. <laughs> you know, like prefer the company. You know, like like <laughs> even like if like if you watch the way Papa Jenkins responds <laughs> to when Clyde shows up, he's he's smiling from ear to ear. That's crazy. You know, he man, he's That's basically crazy. galloping Yo! down to the car to to you right. know to, to say what's up, and Clyde is passing out charm. Cups of charm. What's yeah, up, now? Hey, hey, now? Charm. Yeah, what up, Dan? There you go. Uh-huh. Yeah, you ah, ah, right? Like, you know, what up, yeah. big O? Oh, hey, what's up, baby? Yeah. Oh, what's up? Oh. Yeah. Everyone loves Clyde. Everyone. Everyone. And so, and so, imagine what it's like to grow up like that. Right. Yes. To grow yes. up in the same room. That's tough. Bro. Same house with the charismatic guy. Right. And then, I was, no, your point. Mm. And then on top of that. 
Clyde stole and stole your girl. What Roscoe? Come on, stole your girl. He yeah. stole what was what was Roscoe's. Yeah, what Roscoe earned. He earned it. Yeah, it's important to call out that he he earned it. Yeah, ah, such an important scene. Yes, he earns it and immediately learns the lesson that it does not matter. It does not matter, Lucinda. It does not matter. You know why yeah. it doesn't matter? Th- that scene, because, and this is what I learned the hard way. I learned, mm-hmm. so, B.T. Kingsley. Shout out to B.T. Kingsley, B.T. Boy. Kingsley. B.T. Kingsley, oh, this guy is a villain. And I'm going to tell you <laughs> why, bro. My <laughs> entire <laughs> life, I tried to play by the rules because I thought everybody was watching the same cartoons I was, mm-hmm. right? Uh-huh. Honor, you don't do these bad things, and you will be rewarded, right? Mm-hmm. Roscoe Jenkins said, all right, bet. I want to ask her to the to the joint. You want to ask her to the joint. Let's have this race. Whoever wins gets to ask. Yeah. He does all of that. Clyde says, anyway, so what's going on, yeah. baby? You want to do that? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yo, but I thought we were, this is what I learned from B.T. Kingsley. My whole life, I was like, you know, you get into fights and you're like, you know, you fight honorably. I'm going to fight. I'm not going to pick mm-hmm. anything up to hurt. This is just fists. Right. B.T. said, it's a fight. I'm not I'm not playing with honor. I'm trying to win. Mm-hmm. If there's something around to hurt you or even break something, I'm going to do it. And it blew my mind because there are a lot of people who think that way. Mm-hmm. And that was a lesson that you see young Roscoe learn about Clyde in the world. That mm-hmm. just because you play fair doesn't yep. mean other people are going to play fair. Right. Yep. Blew my mind, bro. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and Roscoe learns that, like, life isn't fair. Because he gets his ass beat and Clyde doesn't. And they're guilty of the same Same thing. thing. And he's right there watching. He's right there watching. He's looking for fairness. And then he realizes. He's looking. He says, yeah. Yeah, he's looking. Your turn now. Yeah. Yeah. And so and so I think at that point, at that point, it's very clear that Roscoe's leaving. Yeah. <laughs> at 12, I'm at 12, out, bro. He was like, fuck this place. He's not going <laughs> like, nobody's to stay honorable. there. Nobody. Nobody's My nothing My father is fair. isn't even. He's charismatic. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking gone. Like, I think at that point, he started looking at colleges on the West Coast. <laughs> right. At 12. At 12. Well, UC bro. San Diego. Like, he was UC like. UC San Diego. UC he immediately was like, I want to go. I want I want to be up out. Yeah. He contemplated. I remember I remember getting in trouble in college. In high school. I'm sorry. And my grades were slipping. Mm. And, I, and I came home, and I had to show my father my, 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 my progress report card. Had an F on that bad boy. Ooh. And a D. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad said, okay. No, at first it was a C. That was like six weeks prior. Because that was the progress report, yeah. not a report card that right. came out. And the next one was still a progress. You get like two progress report cards. Then report card. And then report card. Yeah. Two or three, actually. Um, he said, all right, son, get that shit up, man. I said, all right, yes, sir. I came back. It was worse. F and the D and the C. He was like, okay, so all right, cool. Me me warning you to get it up wasn't good enough. You ain't playing football no more. You're done. Oh! After, that was a punishment? After school, come home. Let you not be home. You guys at 3.15, at 3.10, be home by 3.25. You got 15 minutes. Let you not be home. Let's see what happened. Pops tra- I was like, nigga, I'm, nigga, I'm a senior, bro. I'm a senior, I'm a bro. I'm captain mm-hmm. on the football team, bro. I'm getting recruited. Then what are you doing? I didn't care. No grades. Yep. So Pops I'm a tripping. captain. I missed two days of practice, bro. Two days of practice. Hurt. I'm sick in the room. I'm sick. Mm-hmm. I'm like, he don't understand, nigga. We poor, nigga. Oh, I need a scholarship, nigga. That's what I'm going to college. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's a progress report. I'm going to get it right. It's a progress report. All he, he, but that don't understand is he sees it's a report card. I said, don't keep, don't keep saying it's a progress. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a report card. Mm-hmm. It's a progress report card. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Long story short, he let me back on the team after three days of missing practice, like a whole week or some mm-hmm. shit. And he let me back on the team because I was sick. He could tell I was dying. I yeah. was sick. Yeah. <laughs> dying, bro. Come on. And he was like, son, I, I'm panicking. I panicked. And I, I just saw that you was fucking up. And I didn't. I couldn't let you fuck up, so I had to do something drastic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go back on the team and get that shit going. I graduated with straight A's. Yeah. You know wow. What I'm saying? So, yeah. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? But that's because of Pops. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm smart. You know what I mean? But Pops also was aggressive. Yeah. So being smart, uh, being cool, I uh, a little smart, and an aggressive-ass Pops mm-hmm. with them grades. 
is why I had straight A's. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But you always been, and I don't think people even understand the level of intelligence that you have. Man. You've always been so smart. So the Man. fact that you mm -hmm. were even having a C, a D, and an I was, F. I was senior, senior year, you start tripping. Too you start, yeah. You, you start, yeah, you start yeah, laxing and lax and shit. I already got my college uh, college letters and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I'm getting recruited heavy. So nigga, your head getting kind of like swole. You know, yeah. So and I mean, and, and, yeah. At that, and at that point, you realize that like this shit don't really matter. It don't, mm -hmm. right? Like you get you get to that point, and you're like, like at some point in time, you realize that like I'm in control of my life. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm all I'm I'm already mentally past this place. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And like, I already knew I was leaving. Yeah, yeah. you know, so, so get the fuck about it. I love my pops. It's, my it's hard, but I'm gone. It's hard to stay. Yeah, Nobody. yeah. He, uh, you're mm -hmm. right. I, uh, mm -hmm. I, oh, uh, you, know, you get recruited. You get recruited. Off your your sophomore and junior year, mm -hmm. not just for sports, but athletically too. Like your mm -hmm. your your report cards, because be, you you ended, you're already SATs before your last grades of your senior year come in. You already accepted to colleges. Or That's why accepted. senior year isn't as important, right? You know, man, I did. I thought and I it was the opposite. That. I, I thought it was ninth. Well, I knew I ruined my ninth grade year, but tenth through twelfth, I was on an honor roll the entire you know mm -hmm. three years. Mm -hmm. They were looking at 9th, 10th, and 11th. And I'm mm -hmm. like, but, but what about 10th, 11th, and 12th? They're like, no, 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 no. I didn't know that until yeah. too late. 10th and 11th for sure. 10th and 11th. 9th grade, no one cares. So, you know what I'm saying? so before we get into some awards, I got some questions to ask you guys. Yeah. Right? Um, where is this? Is this movie a top five movie for Martin? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Break them out. Count, count, Ooh. count them out. Okay, so uh, we got life, life. Well, Ooh. okay, are we are you are we leading with movies that he's done with other people? Because that's a I look at life and I look at the Bad Boy series as him with someone. Cold when I'm Star. thinking about Martin movies, as a as a purely Martin vehicle, thin line between love and hate, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh huh. That's there. Talking uh -huh. dirty after dark. Talking dirty after dark. It's a classic. Yeah, those who if you haven't seen that, go see that. Matter of fact, you're coming back for that. Cool. Talk it after dark. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. You got to. Um uh, Thin Line, Talk Dirty After Dark. You gotta have this on there. Ro Welcome to Roscoe Jenkins. Yes. Uh damn, that's a co-lead thing. I don't mind the co-leads though. But if you're doing so lead. Blue Streak. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm Blue sorry. Streak. Blue Streak. Blue Streak for sure. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is even more yeah. criminally but, 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 under But that but that's that's a that's a co-star too. But but that was a lead engine. The only reason it wasn't okay when I say co lead, like you look at life, you look at Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. That's mm -hmm. bam, them two, two superstars, yeah. Yeah. two superstars. Tim Robbins, you is don't a, even a think star, about who the yeah. villain is mm -hmm. of that movie because right. the villain was the <laughs> that white cop. Yeah. I mean, a white dude that framed him with the thing. Who had uh, he took his father's watch? Oh, you talking about life? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that's Martin and him both being uh, heroes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you look at what's the worst that could happen, Danny DeVito was the villain in that movie. Yes. Yeah. So Martin was still holding his own. He had his own team of people, Bernie yes. Maggie, yeah, all of them. Yes. But it was Martin led. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. Bad Boys, yes. co-led with Will. So okay. just Martin movies. I'm thinking, what the worst, what's the worst that can happen? I just mistook for Nothing to Lose with Tim Robbins. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Nothing That's to Lose. Yeah, another I love it. I, I, no, but another good Classic. One. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is maybe an unanswerable question. Mm -hmm. But if Martin and said, don't get into the fight and, and come crashing into the kitchen, does this movie fundamentally change? The reason why I ask is, is that the wife is now comfortable. The fiance. Joy, Joy's, uh, uh, Joy's character is now comfortable. She's drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah, she's getting along. Everybody's laughing. She got faded a little she bit. She got faded she's a little bit. It. Like if she gets more comfortable with the family, does do they make it out of there still engaged? No. Let me tell you why. Go ahead. You do know that regardless if they had an argument or the fight. That obstacle course at the end of the weekend was going to, was happen. Going to happen. It's tradition. Yeah, that was going to evoke old emotions. That was and and that was going to it's be inevitable. The thing that was going to it was inevitable. Yeah, inevitable. and she was her competitive nature was well, oh, going yeah. to come out regardless. It was yeah. already yeah. starting to. I just thought it that's was, a good question. It was because it's the one scene where she's happy and she's comfortable. Yeah, 
and she's a part of the family. Right. And sometimes all it takes is for the girl you brought home to get comfortable. That's it. And now you can get comfortable too. But right? that her flaw wasn't even, I mean, the entire th- inevitable, but the thing that happened that ruined her mm-hmm. was when, because Martin was cool with all of that. Roscoe was cool with her being uh, uppity and treating mm-hmm. everybody weirdly and mm-hmm. the family not liking her. He didn't care. Right. Mm-hmm. It was until she said, leave your son behind. Yeah. And he did, too. And yeah. he did. That that was the, all right, you can't have her around. Because if she's saying leave him behind on that's something crazy. like this. That's nuts. That's crazy. <laughs> that's a character flaw, yeah, bro. That's crazy, bro. She don't care about if, him. Uh, she don't care about if, nobody. Yeah. Right. But if, winning. Yeah. If you got a woman in your life that don't care about your kids mm-hmm. or a man in your life mm-hmm. that don't care about your kids, run. Leave him behind. Leave her behind. That's crazy. Because she yeah. also didn't care about his family. He told her how he felt about his family, mm-hmm. and she came in with that armor on for him. Yeah. Like, nobody matters except for us. We're going to show them, baby. Mm-hmm. You're going to show them how great you are and how great this is. Yeah. And this is team. Like, that's how team she was. Me. And even And yeah. even at the end, she was very eager to be like, when Martin was saying who he wasn't going to invite to the wedding, for the, to the wedding, she was like, I'm so glad you said that because I wasn't fucking with him. See? Right? <laughs> Basically, yes. you know what I mean? So that, that's, a, that's a great reveal. And the dice game in the fight was traumatic for yeah. sure, but they kind of got past that. They did because it wasn't until the obstacle course happened. Yeah. Where they, they weren't even tripping at first. They, mm-hmm. they started off cool. Then he said some slick to him. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, I'll beat you again, bro. What are you yeah. talking about? Remember, he already had on sweats, yep. <laughs> on a t-shirt and, and sh- or shorts. Mm-hmm. He went and changed again. Yes, into some Jordan gear, some Nike, uh, some Nike gear, mm-hmm. and uh, Sam went and got dressed. Yep. So that they were already there. They left and came back. Yes, yeah. happening. So it was going to happen regardless. Yep. Say it. Mm-hmm. It was an unsituation, un- a uh, situation that was going to in- in- inevitably happen. Happen. Say the entertainer. We gave him credit for top five, his acting ability there. Mm-hmm. But Sid's character work, when he's in his pockets of being able to show these ranges, mm-hmm. in my opinion, he doesn't, he's not able to show it on a neighborhood, which is an incredibly funny mm-hmm. show. He's always gonna be legendary funny. But you see Sid kind of going into a character. Sid, when he's able to just be free, mm-hmm. bro, and in, in this movie, he was free. Yeah. He's showing you the slight hand movements, the yeah. eyes, the all of this to mm-hmm. let you know. And that's why I love the casting of Young Clyde and as said, Young Clyde was amazing. They were mm-hmm. Young Clyde was amazing. Yeah. 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 When, when they finally let said do a dramatic role, yes. he can win an Emmy or an Oscar. Immediately. He's like, yeah, because, he's super strong. And, you, and you brought about, you talked about this when we were talking about Nutty Professor, mm-hmm. and it's always stuck with me because I always find it to be brilliant. When you, when you talk about what actors pull from, mm, yeah. right? What they pull from. And you can tell from Seth's comedy that he's been yeah. in some rooms and some places and some characters that there's a deep reservoir yeah, for him to uncle, pull from. father, grandfather. And, not, and pull from it from a dramatic standpoint. Yeah. yeah. Right? Look yeah. at Barbershop. Mm-hmm. The, like, we all laugh yeah. at that character. <clears throat> but Seth was one of the first young guys believably playing an old man. Mm-hmm. Sid yeah, was probably was. the same yeah. age as Cube in that movie. Yeah. And he's playing this significantly older man and we believed it for three straight movies. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the ability. Yeah. When you look at top five, we were all like, we know that character, but I didn't know Sid right. could do that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. how incredible he is. Yeah. 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 Somebody's going to put him in a in an HBO drama. Ooh. That's yeah. going to fundamentally change and, and, the yeah. way we, and we look at it. It's going to prolong his career, too. Yeah. Because yeah. he's going to be one of them dudes to 70. He's going to be a Morgan Freeman type yeah. guy. He'll be acting forever. Yeah. He yeah. should you be. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah. He's, he's, he's got that kind of ability. And, he's, and on top of that, he's still funny as hell. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he could definitely go drama for sure. Hot take. Is this movie fundamentally different if you cast Jamie Foxx as Clyde? Ooh. Here's the thing. Last time I had my brother here, yeah. we had a disagreement. Yeah. And I still disagree with that, that <laughs> yeah. hot take, that steamy hot take. But mm-hmm. that's a great question. And if, I, if I'm being honest, now, first of all, those two young men here, brother Martin Lawrence and Jamie Foxx, mm-hmm. have influenced me. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. I did sure. probably primarily, for sure. You for can sure. tell in my comedy. You can tell in how I write. Everything you know what I'm saying, I, I'm I, I don't do the mannerisms as much because I'm a bigger guy. Mm-hmm. It don't fit that well. You know what I'm saying. But I grew up doing and mimicking them my whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, 
I think Jamie Foxx could do a- anything. He's extremely talented, probably one mm-hmm. of the most talented dudes that ever graced a stage mm-hmm. or a movie set. Um, I had one thing about Roscoe Jenkins that Martin brought to life was just the this goods grouch type type character. Mm-hmm. Martin is super silly. Yeah, he also plays very serious. Mm-hmm. In the same movie, same show, same yeah. scene, he can jump in and out of it. Mm-hmm. Mar- uh, uh, Jamie can. Jamie's done a series. We've seen him mm-hmm. do dramatic. We see, and he does a great job. Roscoe Jenkins, because it was already played by Martin. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I could see him playing Buddy Love or Nutty Professor. <clears throat> in that sense, the same as uh, uh, if, if we had to take Eddie out of there and put somebody else there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see Jamie doing it. Yeah, I don't know. If I see him doing Roscoe Jenkins and, and it being as effective as Martin did. Mm-hmm. Martin plays a perfect Roscoe Jenkins. He does. And you want to know why? Because I thought, okay, if Jamie was in this movie, he would have had to have been Clyde. Clyde, That's the only yes. way it would have fit. Mm-hmm. A perfect Clyde. A perfect Clyde. Clyde. And, uh, yeah. Cedric, we don't need to leave. We don't need to switch yeah. him out. We don't have at to switch all. you out at all. Mm-hmm. But it, it, just in case Cedric wasn't near or available, mm-hmm. Jamie Foxx would have murdered And there's him. nobody else in Hollywood that would have been able to do it other than those two guys. Yeah. But oh. Jamie... Couldn't have played Roscoe, and I'm going to tell you why. There was only one thing that Jamie would have been missing playing Roscoe. Let's see. Let's hear it. And that was the heart. There's a humility that Martin gave in this movie throughout. The humility of, yeah. man, I lost again. Or, man, I couldn't get the girl. Or, man, my dad doesn't love me. Jamie has given heart in so many different performances, but never in the pockets that we saw Roscoe show the heart. I'm trying to disagree, and I don't think I can't. I, can. I think he's right. <laughs> I'm trying to find. I'm I like, no, no, right. no, I can find that heart for Jamie. I can find it. He showed it. I'm talking about it, a similar circumstances no, 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 no. of losing. You, you, Give it you're to me. right. Like, I can't. Yeah. Because I, I love J- Jamie to me. I agree wholeheartedly with everything that you said. I literally, 10 years ago, I had to really be like, man, I have to be myself because there were so many moments where I was like, mm-hmm. I'm starting to sound like Jamie. Let mm-hmm. me change my band. Yeah. He's incredible. But it was like the pockets that Martin gave Roscoe in the uncertainties yes. and in the heart yes. was like, ooh, yeah. J- I can't see Jamie pulling that off that He way. hasn't shown me that yet. Right. He hasn't shown me that yet. I got to see him in the movie where I, I've seen, i seen, this is why I love um, Roscoe Jenkins, the film. Mm-hmm. Is I, This is my first time seeing one of my favorite actors, favorite entertainers yeah. look th- th- vulnerable as hell. Yeah. Like he was literally, the, yeah. he was li- literally in the movie, the loser of the movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I've never seen him, even the, the, uh, the, the um, dead, not deadbeat, but like the, the, the shiftless cousin. Reggie, mm-hmm. Mike yep. Epps was teasing him, yeah. making fun of him. Somebody yeah. give him a bread to pass. Getting, getting, yeah. yeah, getting the upper hand on him all the time. Yeah. The entire and time. Saying, yeah, so it was the like. Entire, ain't nothing changed around here. Nothing. Yeah, you, you still, still the low man. You still yeah. low man, you, bro. St- you still the low man. And, and Reggie is probably the little cousin. Yeah. 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 And you still losing to you your st- little you cousin. You still the low man. The only, so there's one quick take, and then we have to get uh, yes, to, we, to awards. We do. What's interesting is, is that, and I, I wrote this in my notebook when I was writing, when I was watching the movie. If you cast Jamie as Clyde, it makes sense from a an appearances standpoint. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, Jamie is is more attractive than 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 Martin. Mm-hmm. He seemed to be more athletic mm-hmm. than Martin, right? Smoother than Martin. Mm-hmm. So it all kind of like makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. but in a weird kind of way, like said, don't look more athletic right. than Martin. So it's right. just like, like I'm I'm just as good. As this guy. Yeah. Why are y'all giving him so much love? <laughs> right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, he's not better looking than me. Right. right. You know, he's not, you know, why Why y'all love him like that? It's the confidence. You know what I mean? And so I thought that was interesting. So I think the fact that, like, Clyde, like Cedric's Clyde is not demonstrably better than, than Roscoe at anything. Right. Besides working a room. Maybe, right? right? Like, you don't have that trunk. Cedric the Entertainer, go back his whole career. Mm -hmm. Every move you've seen him in, every show you've seen him in, Mm -hmm. nobody's ever cracked a fat joke. Yep. No! You get what I'm saying? Cedric is not the- because he's not the dude that Mm -hmm. you're going to do that to because he's making you fall in love with him so much that you'd be like- That's a great point. Listen, 
I've never heard never a Cedric the Entertainer fat joke. No, no, never. I never seen them get teased. He's not the butt of nobody's jokes. No, he's no. too smooth. The big sexy. He's too yes, and he's never even said. He's never even acknowledged his weight nope. on Kings of Comedy. The only thing that he said remotely close to him being big is he's like. I done hurt my whole left side. My whole left side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. that that's just a body thing. He didn't say yeah. nothing about weight. Yeah. Right. So, bro, it's like, I don't know how you've been able to have this almost 40-year career it's without he, it. It's him as a person. Yep. I, I promise you, in real life, he's like that. Yeah. They, they they cast him as the lovable uh, woman, woman magnet. Yeah. His woman in Steve Harvey's show was a Ooh. beast. Yeah. LaVita Alizé Jenkins. Yes. Yeah. She was... Extremely underrated because he played the Kelly Bundy. She played mm -hmm. the dummy. Right. But she's a beautiful ass, tall, yeah. chocolate woman. Mm -hmm. And she Very loved the wrong. hell out of out of uh Cedric. Cedric. Hey Seddy. Seddy. Yeah. So yeah. He, I mean, like, he, but I think the casting directors look at him as that. He's gonna be the heartthrob. He's gonna be the guy mm -hmm. that can pull someone like uh um a Lucinda. Yep. Or yeah. someone like yeah. a, a Lavita Alize Jenkins. Yep. That guy, that's, big boy, that's he a, can pull But him. that's pull a him. that's a real dynamic, right? right. Like, you know, because Guys with that kind of personality that light up the room, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, like there's somebody to be like, man, he don't, you know, he don't got this, he mm -hmm. don't got that, but he got the one thing, yeah, he's got that cool. It's the thing, he's got that cool. He's got, you know, he's he's, he's cool and he's funny Ooh. and he's charming, Ooh. right? So like those, like if you've got any combination of that, you that will always beat fit, yeah, and that will Facts. always be that will always ultimately. Beat fine, yeah. right? There's a lot of guys, you know. You know, I don't need to pause, maybe, but there's a lot of guys that's fine, handsome guy. Pause definitely pause that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but, but, but <laughs> in, in context, we know where you're going with it. We know where you're going with it. Almost, you. uh -huh. you know, it almost felt like when I'm driving too fast. And it's not enough time for me to hit the brakes. I'm gonna have a collision. <laughs> right? <laughs> you were going there. Yeah, so, so it's just Dang. like uh, so there are a lot of guys that there are a lot of men that are handsome, mm, right? Right. And uh -huh. they've traded off of that. That's their that's their primary export. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you know, is there is the fact that they're handsome. And I think that works for young women. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But I think once you get give me some charm or give me some funny, mm -hmm. yeah. those guys always win. In the yeah. end, yeah, right, right. because right. you know those are the things that that women are and that uh, people are right. attracted, attracted to. to. Yeah. So you know, so that's why it's why you know the, the the big you know the big funny you know charming guy always has the most friends yes. always because yes. he's that dude and that's and that is who Clyde's that is who says Clyde is yeah mm -hmm. he's that guy. Right, he like, asked the girl that ended up being the prom queen mm -hmm. when they were kids. They were yeah. twelve. Are you gonna go to the dance with me? And she said yes. Yeah, she wasn't and, waiting for nobody else. She was like, oh, right. And me. he had no hesitation. He knew, you know what I mean? Like, and and, and they say in the movie, and Clyde been smashing his whole life. Yeah, she the said whole it. Family's He's a knows. player. Oh. The whole family. The beautiful. Knows. She was like, I was. She's like, <laughs> yeah. she said, I got love for Clyde, mm -hmm. but he's a player. Yeah. He's not serious about nobody. You know what I'm saying? So that that was her reason for not being with him. Yeah. Not his weight, not his looks. She no, was like, this dude is yeah. the man. Everybody knew I, everybody I'm knew Clyde was smashing. He right. smashed. Clyde smashing. He was getting it in. He was I smashing. completely overlooked that for years he's been smacking. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh man. Yeah, he's the, you gotta, I know. He's the girl, he's the guy that girls be like, I don't know, it's just something about him. There's something about you him. You know what I'm saying? He was like, mm -hmm. hey man, you know. Hey like, Clyde. Oh, what's going on? What up? <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. Betty. Yeah, yeah, he's your cousin, yeah. right? Even, That's the greatest yeah, one. Even, joke. even Betty was like, even his cousin was like, God yeah. damn, we can something about Clyde. Listen, something about Clyde. listen. If you watch the way the yard moved and gravitated towards Clyde when, when, he, got the up, he, got when he got out the Escalade, I feel like damn near every extra on set <gasps> was in proximity right. to the back of that, right? And, yeah. and 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 he was King Clyde, King mm -hmm. Clyde, right? You know, showed up. Offering jokes, smiles, and pies. Yep. He's the best. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Let's go to MVP. It's hard. Who is the MVP? It is... <laughs> Pause. Pause <laughs> is hell. <laughs> Woo! Uh, Apologies. Yeah. Apologies. Ah. Super pause. <laughs> you got an accident, too. Um, <laughs> Man. Who is the MVP? I got blindsided <laughs> on myself. <laughs> who is the MVP of, of Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins? The most valuable player, man. Mm -hmm. uh, most valuable player... I kind of got to give it to Joy Bryant 
Joy Ooh. Bryant was MVP. She delivered in every single scene she was in. She helped drive the story. She helped at every pivotal point in the story, except until her exit, she drove. Oh. Mm-hmm. From the very beginning, Wait. TV show, the airplane, the airport, meeting the family, during the family gatherings, all of it. Wait a minute. Usually, I'll be like, I don't know her, but because the the MVP would be somebody. He never had a conversation with someone that gave him the voice of reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He never had that. That he never had that. You know, you forget. You forget who you became. This and the other. Mm-hmm. He never came to that conclusion except through her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He realized I completely lost myself because of her behavior and her her statements. That talk they had on the way to the airport. Yeah. He was yeah. like, as opposed to usually that talk would be, hey, you know what? You can't forget where you came from. Ros- mm-hmm. Your name is Roscoe Jenkins Jr., not Stevens. Yeah. And the the, the girlfriend should the, the fiance would be the one to tell him, you know, you need to go back mm-hmm. and fix this with your father and your mother. And not your her. Cousin. No, but she but but the same result happened. Yep. The end result was the same. She talked him into going back to his family because of her her toxicity. Yep. She wanted to get it all. So on she camera. might. She yeah. Then she, wanted to replace the family with actors. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. She did one. Mm-hmm. She did that. She she won that. I can't fight that. My favorite character is Monique. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. She's, like, she's my favorite. Yes. Uh, you to, said MVP. Yeah. Yeah. And and, 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 I, and I think I think it's hard to. I think you make a, a very lot of compelling time we argument. Do that. We, 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 our MVP is usually our favorite character. Well, sometimes. my favorite character is Monique. Monique, yeah. first of all, I'm such a fan of Monique on and off camera. Like, yeah, and she's, she's so funny. She's so naturally. Good. And in that movie, she's I so felt like, good. oh, thank you, Monique. Because there's not been one movie where Monique did not deliver. Yeah. No, she, she, she's never had, uh, she was hiding that. No, I no, was, no. she's a killer. I was watching this, literally, I said it out loud to my wife. I don't know who's winning because Mike Epps is is oh killing. He's killing. He's yes. killing and Monique is killing. But what's funny is, is that to me, why I give it to Monique is even her younger version was hilarious. Yep. Where they would flash yes. to her and she would be laughing at her. <laughs> you know, like I just thought it was great. Let me tell you something about my Monique that I don't know who can do it. Mm-hmm. Who what mm. female, what female actress can do it when when uh Roscoe was giving his last speech at the banquet at the 50 year anniversary. Um, and she was crying. And she, she didn't even have to open her mouth up, and I'm laughing. Mm-hmm. She said, mm mm, mm mm. Yeah. N- dog, See, I died. That's subtle I shit. I was right real there. subtle that's shit. subtle yep. shit. It's like, man, she mm-hmm. did the same mm mm impressions. Yeah. And it was a different mm mm. Mm-hmm. But man, different character, yep. different reason. She's amazing. She's the amazing. The only woman on earth that could have done. That role justice, if it wasn't Monique, they give it to me. Would have been Jennifer Lewis, and she's way hey, too hey, old to have been her. Wait, yeah, bro. <laughs> on my entire life, yeah. On my entire life, yeah. Right, as you were saying this, I I was like, there's nobody. Only yeah. person that he can do it. Only person that can do that is Jennifer Lewis. Mm-hmm. And my, on my life, Jennifer in my Lewis. head. Mm-hmm. So when you say that, I was like, okay, I know I'm on to something. If yeah, Clayton Thomas yeah. thinks the same way. Hey man, that's a great cast, but she would be too, she would be too. She's young. too old. Yeah, yeah unless she was an old. auntie. She immediately and auntie, she could have been cast as that as auntie and give her some lines yeah. give yeah. her some scenes yes uh, when she was like when the scene where Mike Epps I know we gotta go mm-hmm. Mike Epps and and and, uh, and Monique were in the shower in the bathroom that was a scene they said we gotta keep this in there Yeah, it was unnecessary it didn't so have to, did not mm-hmm. need to be there they said this is comedy gold <laughs> she was like I'm gonna tell my daddy did you hear something see my treats mm-hmm. see my treats see my treats oh yeah. my gosh yeah. listen <laughs> she she's it's interesting because because Otis is authentic without saying much. Yeah, yeah, yeah but he yeah. feels like a real person. Yes, he yep. does. He Big bro, feels sure. like a real person. Mm-hmm. Yep. Monique feels like a real person. Yeah, bro. she like my cousin like, Marcia. She the, every interaction feels like something someone would do. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. When she's interacting with 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 uh, Bianca, Joy Bryant's character, Banaka, Banaka. Yeah, Banaka. the way she calls her Banaka. Baloney, Baloney, but. but <laughs> <laughs> the way she's giving her chance, and the way she she said, "We're trying to give you a chance, get to know you, uh-huh. such and such." The way she's messy, yeah. Uh-huh. The way she like she just to me like like bottle that. Like I I love to me this this is my favorite 
role yeah. that she's guys. ever done. Yes. She's at her best here for me. She said, when she pulled up on him, he was rocking, after after Big Bro knocked him out, and he's walking home, and she pulled up on him, Ooh. and she was like, man, ain't you tired of getting bitched? I started <laughs> dying. <laughs> See, yeah. because that's yeah. somebody, that it, that's not in the script, and no. if it is, yeah. she took that script and made that, that line, Yeah. The way she said it, she tried to get bitched. Mm-hmm. Getting bitched. Yeah. <laughs> they they let they Monique let her, is a they monster. Let her cook. She is. They, they let, let her cook. cook. And um, so, and that's why we don't have a lot of films like this anymore. That movie, this movie came out in two thousand eight. Yeah. And we don't see black being portrayed this way. It's always over the top and not realistic. The closest thing oh. after this was Meyer, the Meyer Christmas with Monique, which mm-hmm. came out in twenty seventeen. Oh. We gotta watch that. This because it's interesting because Glover and this Slim. movie mm-hmm. is authentic in a way that that Tyler Perry movies, I don't want to say are not, but there's there's different levels, mm-hmm. right? One of the things that I noted about this movie is how good it is technically. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. It's right. shot well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is paced wonderfully. Yes, yeah. right. No fat. No, no fat. fat on it at all. Yeah. yeah. Despite the fact that I know they ran a lot of film mm-hmm. letting Mike Epps and Monique and yeah. others just go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, they took all of that footage and wrote it. And I was just like, this movie is really well done. Yeah. Like, it's just supremely I well just, done. The only complaint that I have, and this is with a lot of comedies, man. This is with a lot of rated R comedies. Directors don't include the bloopers like they used to. Like, there used to be a time yeah. growing up we would see these I movies love to see and that. you see the whole 20 minutes of credits be bloopers. You'd be mm-hmm. like, yes. I so, feel like I feel like in this film, mm-hmm. then the, at the end where the credits were going, that yeah. was the bloopers. There was no laugh. They didn't, break, they didn't break the third wall. Right. But like them just talking about their problems and mm-hmm. about the on, on the on the show mm-hmm. on the TV show with him mm-hmm. that that was mm-hmm. uh, I I agree with you Hence, yeah that's why I do the bloopity bloops yeah I gotta have that's them. why I do bloopers for mine as you should yeah you know saying that's how we grew up that's how we were raised we yeah. raised this way because if you um, laugh if you like what we've condensed this to yeah let me show you how how uh, how long mm-hmm. let me show you how it got there yes you know what I'm saying it, it was a work in progress yeah yeah you know I mean does this movie have have an LVP oh an LVP you know what. <laughs> the son, the son was LVP. He okay. was the least valuable person in this movie. Yeah. We we needed we needed him. We needed him, but we didn't need him. Yeah, yeah. Because that if you take the son out, the entire movie still stays the same. Yeah, right. There's no difference. And also, as a child, when you see a child play a role like that, there also isn't a lot of um, opportunity for them to bring something special to it anyway because there aren't a lot of other kids mm-hmm. cast in the movie. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, unless you're the the smart alecky kid, you're not really bringing anything right. to that film. He he was a good actor. He did a good job. A solid job. It was okay. okay. He was okay. Yeah, I mean... I, I'm kind of with you. I mean, the thing is, is, is that like... They gave him too much to do yeah. above his ability level. Yes. Right? Okay. So he generally just operates as a sourpuss... For most of the movie, right? Like you know, kind of. Hey, know, Dad, wish you would have. Wish you would come more often. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that yeah. like that kind of beat. And because there's no, there's no good scene between like between him and Roscoe. Yeah, there's no like great conversation mm-hmm. or great true, you know true, revelation. True, true, true. Good point. So so we so. They don't. They don't like close the circle. Right on on the, and because of that, he's the most throw. I, I, with everybody was, else being amazing, yeah, he stands out as a. And on top of that, Dad, help! Yeah, nigga, if you don't get up over that man, thing, man, get mm-hmm. over it, or yeah. just drop down. Yeah, yeah, on, yeah like, like, and then being the, if it's a, it's for the kids, so I get it. Mm-hmm. But if, if it was just for the kids, yeah. then and they they the two adults shouldn't have been in it, right? Yeah, yeah. that was a problem. But it's just for the kids. The father ain't supposed to come help you. You supposed right. to get over there or mm-hmm. lose, nigga. Because Otis's kids performed well. Right. They were funny. Martin but... knocked one of the kids over. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, the okay. daughter. The niece. Yeah. But also, they were big-ass kids. Big-ass kids. Real quick, mm-hmm. fun fact. I know we got to go. Mm-hmm. How old was Otis's son? In, if I had to guess, mm-hmm. 13. In real life? Oh, in sure. real life? Yeah. In real life, his son had to be... Like twenty, he looks <laughs> huge. Thirty eight. He was thirty eight years old. Shut up. At the time of the movie. The time of the movie, he was thirty eight. <laughs> what? My wife, my wife looked it up last night and said, 
She said, how old is this guy? I said, I don't know, probably like, he looked like, he probably like 23, 24. Yeah. She showed me his Wikipedia. 38? He's a musician. God rest his soul, he passed away. Oh, man. Um, But he was 38. Why the fuck was he in the movie? Why? As one of the kids. As, mm-hmm. huh? as a son? <laughs> pull him up, please. Pull uh-huh. I'm bringing it up right now. Brandon yep. Jenkins, right? Brandon Jenkins, yep. Wow. His 38? Is Brandon Jenkins Jr. That means they really went for it with the comedy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Y'all comedians is too much, man. Y'all would, y'all go too far for the comedy. Yep. This guy right here? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Let me go to his... Uh... He had a baby face. Yeah. He looked, old, he looked grown as hell, though. But yeah. I said, okay, so he looked old as hell as a, as a, as a teenage son, but he didn't look no 38. No, he doesn't so look So he looks great for 38. He looks amazing Let for alone, but he looks terrible for 13. <laughs> Let's get into the rankings. Yes. Uh, five fifths, all time classic. One fifth, a movie that got made. Where does Ross? What? Where does Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins rank? One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. Five fifths. Five fifths. Yep. Easy call. Five fifths. Five fifths. Yes. Absolutely. Let's five fifths. Okay. Five fifths. I, I, I thought you were to give me a hot take. I said no. Yikes. <laughs> I guess. Yikes. I guess the question is is. If we did an informal poll, mm-hmm. right? Welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins is probably going to get a lot of fours and a lot of threes. They're going to give it twos because people aren't going to do. You see Why? how we did yeah, earlier? Like, how we were like, like yeah. well, look, uh, life was with Eddie and Martin as a mm-hmm. co- so they're not going to break it down co lead wise. Yeah. They're going to look at what they think the best movies are with Martin in it. Yeah. So you're going to hear Bad Boys after Life. Yeah, that's you're gonna, crazy. You know what I mean? You're going to hear Thin Love and Twin Love and Hate, and they're going to rank this extremely low. Yeah. I'm on way. I'm way to be off camera to ask you this. Yeah, but um, well, well yeah. So. People don't even talk about what's the worst that can happen. And that oh, that movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins is is a very strong five Black Fist movies. Yeah, and better than a lot of. I'm echoing what I said earlier. Better than a lot of movies that people talk about. Bore. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So watch it with your family this holiday season. I always. I also pick movies. By the script and who's in them. Mm. And I'll get to him. I'll get to that in a minute after mm-hmm. this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, this is a great film. Obviously, I want another hour to talk about it. Man. I got you here, man. And when I get you here, I'll try to keep you here. Um, matter of fact, I need you to come back soon. Can you do that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Done deal. I was, there's a movie I want to do with you, bro. I need I need to do it with you. Absolutely. Pause. Yes, sir. So man, we're gonna get up out of here. Yeah. I know we gotta we gotta go, man. But uh I'm your your host. Big Ja mm-hmm. and my co-host. Welcome home, Big Tone. Welcome home, Big Tone. That's Welcome a hell of a name. That's a hell of a name. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. And our mm-hmm. special guest, Clayton Thomas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Yes, this sir. is Blackbusters, and we'll catch y'all next time, man. Be good or be good at it. We love y'all. Peace. Pew to the max. Blackbusters.